Monitors are getting too complicated these days. That's why we've got the Amazon Basics monitor powered by AOC. And uh, you know, I don't know if it's gonna be any good or not because it's, Amazon Basics is a little all over the place, at least from what I've purchased. Some stuff you get it and it's great. It's honestly like just as good as any other name brand or even better. Sometimes it's not so good. I have had the labs take a look at this, but I haven't looked at their results yet. Although Brandon told me it's exciting. So I'm very curious to see how it actually performs. It's 1080p, 27 inches. It does come in a, ah, it does come in a 24 inch model. If you're a little worried about pixel density, uh, 27 inch 1080p is gonna be around 82 PPI. Uh, 24 inch is much closer to 100. So, you know, it's kind of just up to you. Oh, the stand is actually okay. I don't know if you can vase mount this though. No, it does not appear that you can. Oh no, you can. Whoa, okay. As for the rest of the stand, you know, it's not bad. We got a screw in on the bottom here, which is better than a lot of other monitors when you're looking at this price point. Um, a lot of them don't have the screw in. They've just got something that clips on and clacks together, you know, and it's okay, especially for something small like a 24 inch. But once you get up to 27, you want something a little bit more robust. On the back, it's quite a lot to be honest, but on the front, it's really not too bad. You got the little Amazon Basics logo on the bottom. It's not any worse than most brands really. It would be nice if it either wasn't there or it was a little smaller or maybe it was like gray on black or something instead of white on black. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting this to hopefully save a buck and that's just gonna come with some labels being places where you might not want them to be. One thing I don't really like is the stand is uh, kind of weird to install. It's not, well, okay, that's actually not bad. It's kind of neat. It's got these little rails here and it actually just slides on up and then locks into place like that. It's not awful. I've definitely had worse stands, but I would really recommend if you can to just go with a vase mount and put it on an arm instead. While we're down here, we got USB-B to connect to your computer, two more USB-A ports here, two more USB-A ports on the side, power plug, which is nicely just a C13. It doesn't look like it's going to any kind of external brick. Uh, it's DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 1.4. Nothing too fancy, but we don't need it because it's not a high resolution or high refresh rate panel. And then we've got our good old, uh, well, that says D-sub, but that looks like VGA to me. And then we've got headphone jack and and a speaker jack. Uh, one problem with a stand that's as basic as this guy is it basically gives us nothing in terms of any kind of adjustability. We can tilt, actually there's a you know decent amount of tilt, but there's nothing else. Uh, it's not going anywhere, no height adjustment, you're not gonna swivel, you're not gonna pivot. It's stuck here, but that's okay because if you sit down, okay, it's a little low for me personally. I'd probably put a book down or something here. So that'd be the definitely biggest complaint that I have so far is my eyes should be a little bit lower than they are for this thing. As for the actual quality of the monitor itself, it's not awful. It doesn't feel premium in any way, but I mean, it doesn't feel flimsy. I've grabbed a few like, much cheaper feeling TVs recently and you can just, the whole thing's kind of loose. Like the Amazon Fire TV, when you move it, it's like you can feel these panels separating a little bit. Whereas this is, you know, solid and tight. It feels like it's pretty well constructed overall. Another feature I, I actually really like is it's got all of these buttons on the front here. We don't get a navigation nipple, but everything is in clear view. And so you're never gonna have to go searching for which button to press. We'll check out the OSD later once it's powered on. Speaking of turning it on, I'm gonna turn this bad boy on and game on it, but not before a word from our sponsor, Vessi. Do you hate wet socks as much as I do? Vessi footwear makes lightweight, breathable, and most importantly, water resistant shoes. So no more squelchy socks. Their Dymatex material not only keeps your feet dry, but keeps them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The stretchy design shows that comfort is at the forefront, at times making you forget that you're even wearing shoes. Vessi makes cruelty-free products right down to the glue. Their shoes are 100% vegan. Your feet deserve a little treat. So click the link below and use promo code SHORTCIRCUIT to save $25 today. I gotta make some adjustments here because all I have is tilt. It right away doesn't completely feel level. I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but I wanna move it like just slightly this way, but that's okay. Everything seems to be in order. Oh, 60 hertz, that's not good enough. 75, this thing can do 75 hertz for fresh rate, uh, which is a decent jump from 60. It's obviously nowhere near as good as 120 or 144 or so on and so forth. Uh, but you know what? It's doing it. It's okay. It's the 27E2UA. I wish they'd had a easier monitor name to remember, but that one's not too bad as far as monitor names go. I don't think it has HDR. 
which is not a twist. Yep, I don't see any options for it. So we're not going to watch any HDR content to really justify it. But we can always watch the content we normally watch that is an HDR, but an SDR, and we'll see how it is. You know, as much as we kind of proclaim HDR is the future and it's amazing, and it is, it looks really good on a nice display that supports it, SDR content still looks really good. Like, this still looks like it's got a bright point. Like, obviously the range isn't insane, but it's got a range to it. The color is like pretty good. I actually don't see anything that's like wildly out of whack. Uh, no crazy weird banding issues or anything like that. It's IPS, which is kind of the best when it comes to LED screens at least. So, I mean, you're not having to be stuck with VA or TN panels, depending on what you're looking for. It's a regular IPS panel that's edge lit. So you're not gonna get any full array local dimming or anything like that, but it also doesn't have HDR in the first place, so that's fine. It's not gonna make a huge difference. I wanna try the OSD. We've got pretty easy to read buttons here. You know, it's clearly power, so I'm not gonna hit that one. I'm guessing this starts it. Oh, that's my input switch. Okay, cool. This is my OSD. Uh, that's something. I have never seen a horizontal OSD like this. They're usually vertical. Okay, eco mode standard. Uh, yes, always proceed. Whoa, that's because it went to text mode, internet, game, movie, sports. Okay, so these are basically just changing the brightness. That's cool. Oh wait, it does have HDR mode? There's no way. There's no way that I just enabled HDR. Hold on. This is cool. You can change like where all this stuff is, it seems. Game setting. Adaptive sync is on. So this thing does have seem to have adaptive sync. Okay, so now that we've enabled HDR, let's check it out. It's got to just be, yeah, it's got to just be some picture mode profile thing because there is no HDR Windows settings. It's only 8-bit. Yeah, and it's only 8-bit. Uh, there's no way. Okay. I don't know what exactly that HDR setting is changing, but I don't trust it. Don't buy this thing thinking you're gonna enable that and get really stellar HDR content. That's just not gonna happen. We're gonna listen to Crab Rave because this thing has some speakers. I don't know if they're good or not. It's just the waves and stuff, but it's not terrible right now. <laughs> okay, there's basically no bass, but there's no sub. Like, what do you expect? But honestly, that's not bad. We'll play we'll play some games with it. It's 75 hertz and the pixel response time isn't anything to write home about. But you know, this is not bad. This is like totally playable. I just want to spike one, dude. Oh, come on. You're so low. Oh. No. Yeah, the speakers are okay, frankly. Like, I wouldn't want to game with these. I'd rather, you know, use some headphones instead. But these aren't terrible. They definitely do in a pinch. Oh. This is totally acceptable. As much as we brag about like high-end monitors and stuff, and they really have come a long way, um, I think it's time we talk about the price because this thing is only $150. All of this like actually looks pretty good. And that's because Labs tested this thing and it turns out it can do 100% of the sRGB color space. It'll do 90% of DCI-P3. And it's doing that all while hitting a very, very impressive 2.5 average delta E. The reason that number is so important is because anything under two, it's gonna be basically imperceptible to the human eye. So when you're seeing something just fresh out of the box hitting a 2.5, that's crazy impressive. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe Amazon is actually doing something right here. Um, it's not just Amazon, it's all, it's, it's all powered by AOC. And for those of you who don't know, AOC is another monitor manufacturer who we've actually covered several of their uh, displays on this channel. They're usually really good. My only complaint is typically the price. I think they're just a little bit too high, but they haven't done that here, frankly. And the reality is, especially because it's an Amazon Basics product, you're probably gonna see it go on sale every, every now and then. I don't think that you should pick this up as your main display. I still think that if you're gaming, you definitely want like 140 hertz, 120 hertz minimum. But man, do they really make a compelling argument? Here's the thing, there are plenty of other competitors at this price point. Scepter has a pretty cheap monitor. We covered that on why is everyone buying this monitor on LTT. Acer has a pretty cheap monitor. They've all got pretty similar specs. You're gonna see IPS at around this price range. The problem is they're not all gonna be nearly as color accurate as this one. I think we measured the Scepter closer to a Delta E average of six, which is good. It's actually about what we were expecting for a monitor in that price range. If you need something that's actually relatively color accurate, maybe we got lucky. Maybe this is a golden sample and we just happened to test 
literally the best one ever out of the factory. But I don't think so. I think that they're all gonna be pretty much in this kind of range. It's not gonna do anything crazy high end. You're not gonna get amazing HDR experience on it. You're not even gonna get an incredible gaming experience on it because of the lower refresh rate. However, 75 Hertz is playable. 1080p ain't bad. And honestly, what I want more than anything is I just want my colors to be like perfectly accurate. So I know that what I'm looking at on the screen is what is, is exactly what I should be seeing. Would I buy it? Yeah. I think this is a really valid choice for any kind of server rack that you might have because it's got a VGA in it. You know, you've got multiple inputs. Um, it's also a decent side monitor though, especially because while this can't go into portrait mode, uh, you could put it on an arm and throw it in as a side monitor, vertical, or you know, maybe you don't even care about portrait mode. You could just throw it off to the side, something like this, and it'll do the job just fine. Um, I would love some more height adjustment. That's probably my biggest gripe with it. But other than that, I think it's a totally valid buy. Good job, Amazon, and good job, AOC. You've actually made a pretty decent panel at a pretty reasonable price. Thanks for watching. That's the Amazon Basics monitor powered by AOC. If you want to check out any other monitors, uh, maybe check out some of the AOC monitors we've looked at.